It's official. Java just got easier to understand for the beginner Java programmers out there. The prototypical Hello World program that looks like this has transformed into a much easier to understand program that looks like this. This requires way less understanding of a lot of the details of Java, such as what classes are, what the static keyword is, and what this string array of args is. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how this feature works in detail, and where it sits today, and where it's going in the future. Let's pull up IntelliJ and dive right into it. And here to start, we have the original Hello World. This is the first program that many Java programmers start with, and to be honest, it is overly verbose. For the experienced programmers, it's like, okay, yeah, whatever, I need to add my public class, and I need to add a static method so that the JVM can instantiate my main, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, as a new programmer, why should I have to know all that stuff? Well, the good news is, as of JDK 21, when you enable preview features, you don't need to know about all this stuff. So what you can do is you don't need to declare the outside class anymore. That is what is called an unnamed class. And now we're just left with our main method. And I don't even need to declare that the main method is public, nor static, nor that it contains a string array of arguments. So if I just fix the indentation here, this is semantically equivalent when you turn on JDK 21's preview features. Just to prove that it's working, if I run the code, we can see here that we get our lovely printout of Hello World. Sweet. So, what really is going on here? This is the beauty of JEP or JDK Enhancement Proposal number 445. Here's some information on the actual JEP itself. Unnamed classes and instance main methods. We'll talk about what that means here in a second. And really the main goal of this JEP is to make the onboarding process of learning Java easier. This doesn't really gear toward the advanced Java user, and for the advanced Java user, this is kinda like, yeah, whatever. But for the new Java users, this is huge. Instead of having to essentially copy all this boilerplate code that you're just told to do, and you have no idea what all of these keywords mean, all you need to do is follow a much more simpler set of keywords you need to do to start writing your first Java programs. So this is the typical hello world that everybody started with. And then now if we scroll down a little bit, we can see that we can simplify it all the way to here. And there's some good information in this JEP as far as the details of how it works. And for the rest of the video, I'm gonna go through some of the highlights of those things. Okay, so now that we're back to the code, let's talk a little bit about how this works. So JEP 445, which is what JDK 21's preview feature is based off of, mentions two different things unnamed classes and instance main methods. Let's talk about the first one first, and that is unnamed classes. So the terminology is actually gonna change a little bit. In JDK 21, they are called unnamed classes, and in JDK 22, the plan is for them to be called implicitly declared classes, and we can go into that more in a separate video. But basically, the idea of an implicitly declared or unnamed class is that you don't have to do this. I gotta declare it public. So normally your main method would have to go in here like this. And this is perfectly legal syntax. It's just you no longer have to declare this outer class. So a new user of Java doesn't necessarily have to say what is this class thing. Let's see, I just wanna try to understand flow control and different types of primitives or maybe a couple reference types that come with the JDK. You can do all that without having to instantiate multiple of your own custom classes, so why bother having to learn it right away, right? The other update is instance main methods. And basically what that means is normally the main method is declared as static. And the reason that it was declared as static is because when the JVM is launching your program, there is a section of the JVM called the launcher, which determines how to launch your program. And the launcher always looked for a method that followed the exact signature public static void main string args. And if it didn't have that exact signature, then it would fail to launch your program. But that's all changed now. So first of all, the launcher doesn't need to know what access modifier you're using other than you cannot use private. And I'll get to that in a second. It also doesn't require that your main method is static anymore. You can allow instance main methods. 
And you also don't have to specify a string array of arguments if you're not passing in any arguments. So with that, we have simplified our main method down significantly. And if I go back to removing the outer class here, then what we can see is we can add in some additional functions or fields and then our Java program can look a little bit like a C program or maybe more like a script or something. Basically something that requires less overhead to understand. So let's say my string equals hello. I still do have to add semicolons. Now what we can do is we can say my string. And if we run the code, we do get hello printed here. Or similarly, we could define another method. We could say returns void my method. And then let's say that we want to print in here world. And within main, we could call my method. And we can see that we can play around with methods too. So really, this is pretty nice in that when you're a newcomer to Java, your ability to try out different language features that come with the real basics before you really have to scale up your project is really quite nice. And I really think this is something that is long due because Java is normally really good about being scaled to massive scale enterprise applications. But it's also really good when you want to make individual classes because there is the unnamed package and the unnamed module, right? So why should classes be any different? If I just want to have a little script that's in a single file, why should I have to declare a class for it? My hope is that this feature turns from a preview feature into a real feature in later versions of the JDK. So now one thing you might be wondering is, so what happens if I have a main method that is an instance method and then I have a main method that is the static method? Which one will it call? And that is actually pretty well defined within the JEP. So let's go ahead and make a few examples. So we'll say this is main.main static. The first thing is that an instance method and a static method, if they have otherwise the same signature, that is a compilation error. So let's say that I give this one string args. Do you guys think that it's going to call the instance method or the static method? Let's go ahead and find out. All right, so it calls the static method, even though we have the string args here. Interesting. Now, if I were to make these both static, Let's say this is called static2. Now, do we think it's going to call static or static2? And now we can see that it calls static2 in this case. So basically how the launcher works is the first thing it does is it looks for a static main method with a string array as the argument. And if it doesn't find that, then the next thing it looks for is a static method with the name main that doesn't have any arguments in it. And if that doesn't exist, then it looks for an instance method with string args and if that doesn't exist then it just looks for the instance method called main and there's a little bit of interesting stuff with access modifiers too so basically the launcher is going to look for any sort of instance method that is non-private so i could mark this as package private which means i don't have the access modifier present i could mark it as protected and then if I go ahead and update this to call this main.main .main protected and I run it, we can see that we call the protected variant of our main method. But then let's see what happens if we call this private. Now IntelliJ can't run our code because it's declared private and it's not going to know what main method to call. So we can see that the main method that we declare here has to be something that is marked non-private. And then now we'd be able to run it again and it would work. Okay, so that's all cool. Let's say that I add extra arguments into my main method, like an integer a. Same deal, we can't add any additional arguments within our main method. It either needs to be empty or it needs to have an array of strings. And just as a reminder, you can either use this bracket syntax or another one is you can use three dots. Those two are semantically the equivalent. They're basically saying that you're gonna have a, an array of strings that which represent the arguments into your main method and either are acceptable. But one thing that gets really interesting with instance main methods is in order to call an instance method, you have to make an instance, right? So what happens 
if we make a constructor and let's call it main.main .main. and I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the arguments just to make this a little cleaner if we run this code we can see that the launcher creates an instance of our class first and then it calls the main method so this can get pretty interesting so the typical rules of object-oriented programming apply now that we're making an instance. So you could imagine, let's say we have a class called parent, and then we have main extend parent. Let's say that we want our parent class to now print something. Parent.parent. .parent. And the call to super for the parent constructor is implicit here as the first line of the main constructor because main extends parent. So now if we run this code, we can see that we instantiate the parent, then the main, and then we call the main method. So if I keep pulling on this OOP thread for a little bit, what happens if I take the main and I put it into the parent class? This would now be parent.main. Is this gonna work? Yes, it does. You still make a parent instance, a main instance, and then you call the parent main. A little interesting, right? Now, two other cases that I want to cover. If we get rid of our parent here for a second. And we just replace this back with main. So we don't need to extend parent anymore. But let's say that we define a constructor main that takes an integer. And we'll call this main.main .main again. Now we can see that we're back to the same sort of problem. And that is we don't have a default no arg constructor that we can call, therefore we can't run this code. And then one other interesting case I wanna bring up is let's say that we get rid of the constructor so that the compiler automatically has a no arg constructor we can call. What if instead we mark main as abstract? Well, this is interesting we can still compile the code and run it. What's gonna happen here? Uh-oh, we've got an instantiation exception. I don't know if this is something that is considered maybe a miss in the Java language specification, or maybe this is something that IntelliJ needs to fix, but it looks to me like the loader within the JVM is trying to create an instance of our main class to call the main method, and then while it's doing that via reflection, it gets an instantiation exception because you can't create instances of abstract classes. I don't know. But the point being, this is a pretty interesting preview feature. And all things considered, I am really excited for what this can mean for newcomers to Java. Because one of the main critiques about Java is that it's very difficult to learn. And there is a big learning curve. And the Hello World program in particular is really messy and verbose. So... In my opinion, this is a great addition to the language, especially for newer users, but then also for teachers of the language, because then it can allow students to better grasp language concepts without having to understand all this extra boilerplate code. And that was an overview of JDK 21's unnamed classes and instance main methods preview feature. If you enjoyed today's video or learned something new, please do hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a good rest of your day and I hope to see you next time. Take care.